Hello, this is Trudy with True and Healing Travel, and today I'm in El Salvador, and I'm going to be showing you around the charming village of Sushito, and also um, nearby in the forest, um, we are going to retrace the history of the Civil War that ended in 1992 and show you where the um, guerrilla rebels um, lived and fought. Um, and also, lastly, I'm going to take you to the ocean so you can see the surf here in this beautiful country of El Salvador. So come along and join me and you can learn about why you should come visit and how safe it is here in El Salvador. down past the church. Those have got to be the cutest tuk-tuks I've ever seen. All right, we're going to head down this way. The site of the church, check out that bougavillea. That interesting colorful dome up there too. That is just so amazing. That's the back side of the church. El Salvador provides some of the highest quality indigo in the world. Indigo is a plant-based blue dye. We participated in an indigo workshop learning how to make our own blue tie-dye clothing piece. This was through a women's co-op in El Salvador supporting the local artisans. Just off the central square is an indigo clothing store called Art Ani. It is one of the most popular stores in Suchito for indigo clothing and accessories. It also does indigo dyeing workshops. show you a few murals here. The one on the left is by far the most uh, famous religious figure of El Salvador's history. His name is Oscar, was Oscar Romero. So he became the head of the Catholic Church of El Salvador at the end of the 70s. So he became the Archbishop, you know, and as you can see by the mural, he was loved by the humble people, the kids and the women of El Salvador because they even called him the voice of the voiceless because he would take advantage of his position to criticize the government and criticize the army. Because even though the war was officially declared in 1980, in the 70s, the government was already massacring kids, women, and humble people, and students, you know, in El Salvador. You're gonna hear more about that later. They were also killing Catholic priests because Catholic priests started supporting, you know, the revolution because they felt like they had a fair cause, you know. So Romero stood up against that, you know. And so he became a target for the Salvadorian army. So on the 24th of March of 1980, he was giving a mass in San Salvador. And there's a video of this, by the way, you can go on YouTube and look up uh, Romero assassination in El Salvador 1980. And you're gonna see him giving a mass. And all of a sudden, a sniper from the government walked into the church, pulled up a rifle, took the time to aim at his heart and took the shot. He 
por la oportunidad de conocerlo. So he's thanking you for coming all the way to Sinquera, you know, for giving him the opportunity to get to know every single one of you. He's also mm -hmm. thanking me, you know, because after all, I'm the one bringing you here. So, but thank you all. Actually, gracias a usted también. Cualquier pregunta, pregúntale. <laughs> If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. I love, I love being tested too. <laughs> So we're beginning our walk through the forest um, where the guerrilla rebels were during the conflict of El Salvador. So it's a very interesting walk here. <laughs> Remember, indigo is the natural blue color that my Mayan ancestors extracted from a plant called jiquilite. So jiquilite is an average green looking bush, you know, grows to up to two meters, small green leaves, nothing blue about it, nothing special about it, at least to the naked eye. But somehow they knew how to extract that beautiful blue color. And when the Spanish showed up, they fell in love with it they decided to export it. But instead of loading their ships with tons of jiquilita branches and leaves, they came up with this extraction method to extract the blue powder and ship that instead. The guerrilla forces during the war, it's not a replica or anything. So this kitchen had three fires. One fire was here and it would cook on top of it. The other fire was here and the third fire was there. So it had three fires because it was cooking for a campsite of around 30 people. This one was one of the most famous ones for many reasons. One of the main reasons is that this area where you and I are right now, this half of the campsite was actually a hospital. Mm. You can imagine that it was not a very inviting, luxurious or hygienic or equipped hospital, right? Mm -hmm. It's very improvised. As a matter of fact, most of the time they didn't even have actual doctors. They would have either, either students of the medicine university or nurses that would have to act as doctors. I'm going to take this tower up to the top. So you're going to see Sinquera in that documentary. I'm sorry, uh, Wasapa in that documentary. And so do you remember all the bombs that the U.S. was banned from using after the Vietnam War? So napalm, agent orange, mm -hmm. white phosphorus. Well, they gave them to the Salvadorian Air Force instead. Oh. So they dropped all over, especially in that mountain. They wanted to burn it all, so it changed the shape of the mountain. Oh. And it also gave us one of our world records that we have in this country. And like all the world records that I know we hold, they're all shameful, you know. <laughs> the only good one that we have is kind of use useless, you know, but we have the biggest pupusa ever made, you know. <laughs> After two days in Suchito, we took a half-day road trip to our next destination on El Salvador's southern Pacific coast. We stopped to get some great views of San Salvador Volcano. I'm going to show you a little bit uh, where we're staying in El Salvador on the beach. It, for the most part, the rooms are very, very simple, um, but the night side outside is great. It's got hammocks and a lot of places to just relax. and and it's right on the beach. So anyway, here it is.